Yeah, I want to talk about the uh, Colt 1911. Actually, it's a 1991 A1. It's a plain Jane model. It's actually an ultra cheap Colt. Bought a while ago. Um, put thousands of rounds through it. But, you know, it's actually two weapons in one. Um, you can change, I don't know what the hell you call this thing, the commander or something. You know, this thing says the pit bull on it. it it's just a uh, smaller uh, slide. And I had, it, this was actually from Auto Ordnance. It wasn't from uh, Cult. But you can make it smaller. So in other words, you can, you can pretty much make this concealable because it is a pretty narrow weapon. And, you know, with a single stack magazine... It's got it's it's pretty thin. Um, now I do have 11 round magazines. I screwed around with trying to get in 20 round magazines. It told they don't those did not work. I threw those in the garbage, man. These oh these work okay. I forgot who the hell makes them, but the standard magazine is seven rounds. You can also get eight, so eight plus one. But when you have this short slide, it's uh, pretty small. I actually had to mess around with some of the springs. Um, before I got it to work. Now, to be quite honest, see, let me tell you this. This thing I kind of like because the parts are available no matter what. It's not a rare gun. It's not a rare pistol, if you want to put it that way. Um, you know, there's a gazillion of them around. Uh, the other thing I do, let me put this screwed up. I have it like this, uh, the, the strap safety. I got it tied down so it, there's no strap safety. I don't like this crap. I don't like this thing. Um, if I was to use it, I don't like using it uh, locked and cocked. I like just pulling it that back and get ready and do it that way. That's the way I want to do it. Um, to me. Now, the one thing I found with this, when I first started shooting a lot with the pistols, um, when I was really getting into it about... And I haven't done it for some years. I mean, I was doing it for a lot of years and I stopped doing it. Um, I like the Beretta best, and then when I got into the Colt, after I was using the Colt a while, I like the Colt better, I could fire it more accurately. And here's another thing, when you're reloading, um, now I, I got several different calibers, but I only, I only used, uh, three different types of powder, I used Hodgdon 110 for Magnum loads, um, Hodgdon H335 for a lot of the rifle calibers, and pretty much most of the pistol pal calibers was Winchester 231. Now, interestingly enough, the 9mm Beretta with 115 grain projectiles takes 4.9 grains. If I remember that right, doing it from memory. <laughs> you better look in a book, but I swear, to, I think I remember it, man, because it was like the Bible to me. I used to load thousand, a thousand at a time. Um, 4.9 grains of Winchester 231 for the 115 grain 9mm. And it was the same amount of powder for the 230 grain um, uh, 45 ACP in Colt. So it was like basically the same cost to fire this thing. And what I used to do was just get the lead. No no copper jacketed. Uh, I'd get like, um, I don't know, a couple boxes of 500, <laughs> 500 lead projectiles. And put one in each saddlebag of my bike. Take them back, and you know that'd be, be all set for. Because I think I'd look, I'd shoot about, I don't know, a hundred or so center fire a weekend or a day in a weekend, maybe once Saturday, once Sunday, or maybe just one day on a weekend. Then I fire a whole pile of twenty twos. Besides that, twenty twos were cheap, cheap to shoot. Um, the one thing I don't like about this weapon, though, is taking it down. Its bread is a lot easier. You got like a button on the side here. You press it in. You push this lever down. The whole slide comes off. This thing you gotta mess around with this button down here, push this, you know, push this down, push this over, and then when you get, you gotta move this up to where this catch is, so you can pull this out, and then the whole thing slides out. There's something that's actually that pin slides in right here, this this whole hole right here. But um, to give you a, uh, a measurement difference. When you put this slide on here, with the weapon being kind of skinny, it's, uh, see right now, what is that? Somebody tell me that's wrong, but I think that's eight and three quarter inches. So when you put this thing on it, and this thing from here, from here, it's, it's under five inches, I'd say. 
yeah it's four and three quarter inches so the height is about the same as a lot of the larger concealable weapons and if you put the eight round magazine in it might be down just a hair more um, but maybe it's five inches so you have eight plus one in 45 caliber but you know the beauty of this is you can have a full size pistol and you can have a compact pistol in one by changing this slide and it's skinny so you know it's it's not freaking bad man i mean a lot of people you know i don't know why you know people get on one brand you know i remember way back when and i know they're still really great today is the brownie high power a brownie high power brownie high power you gotta have a brownie high power or it was or it was this the cult 1911 and, or something like you know I know there's a lot of new weapons that came out now I hear Glock 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 all the time and like you know the people say my Beretta is a piece of junk and the Glock's only good some people say that I don't know there's a lot of weapons out there that are really good six or is really good anything well you know my you know what my uh, parameter is anything adopted by the military for a long period of time I'm okay with so I'm actually getting a Bursa nine millimeter what the hell you call that thing um the ultra compact um the one that doesn't have the polymer frame it's got like an alloy frame with like a stainless or nickel slide on it um it's gonna take a while to get in but it's it's adopted by the argentine army and it's uh, designed by basically beretta people so it's it's a lot like the beretta i don't mind that thing i'll probably use that for concealed carry but this thing is not bad too it's not bad too because if you get these used, they're not much money. Now, mine, um, out of the box, it always shot. It, this thing, I don't think it ever jammed on me. I don't remember it ever jamming. Maybe it did jam sometime or something. I don't know, maybe something happened somewhere along the line. But it's, it, this thing has been reliable as all hell. Um, other people got the same weapon. Um, they had problems with it. So I was lucky. And this is a Series 80, which means you got this... You can make it into a Series 70 or something, but I don't know. You know, to me, the freaking thing works. I ain't going to screw around with it, man. I haven't done a damn thing to it. It's, strict, it's a Plain Jane Colt. It's actually a 1991. That's a special edition Plain Jane 1911. Um, I haven't done a damn thing to it. My reloads are dead on to whatever the sights are. I never touched the sights. Never did nothing. And I just put lots, loads and loads of rounds through it. Plain lead ball, mainly. I fired, like, hollow points and full metal jacket but usually just plain lead they're cheap and it's about it with plain lead it's about as cheap to reload as a nine mil um you pay you know what the biggest thing is like uh if you buy i'm kind of going wordy on here but i, I know I, I know a bunch of little bullshit from way back um if you buy like um powder and you got to pay that freaking 23 bucks or whatever the hell it is 25 or four bucks 20 bucks whatever the hell it is for the uh, hazard fee for like to, when you to have it FedEx or UPS so like you want to buy like a whole bunch of powder maybe you want to buy like 10 pounds or something and then once you do that you got enough for like because a pound of powder is 7,000 grains and you're going to use 4,900 grains like say 5,000 grains roughly to do load up a thousand rounds of ammunition so right there you got i don't know what freaking 16 1700 rounds of ammunition or something with a pound of powder you know roughly you know if you divide up that hazard duty um the hazard fee on the ups shipping up amongst maybe 10 pounds it's not that much money you're paying about 20 something bucks for a pound of powder yeah bad man not bad and then you get to and the biggest thing the primers aren't much. You just, the 45 takes the large pistol primers. You don't use no Magnum primers, just plain pistol, you know, CCI or Winchester, whatever the hell it is. And you don't, and if you get the, the, the biggest cost is the projectiles. Now, if you really want to get cheap, you can freaking melt down your own lid and move your bolts. <laughs> you can just recollect the lead. You're really freaking shooting cheap. But uh, I, I like shooting this thing a lot. But you know, I'll tell you honestly, I'd rather if I was in a situation where my life depended upon it. Not that this thing would jam or anything like that. I'd rather have a Beretta because it has more rounds in it. And if there's some kind of malfunction, if I had to fuel strip it or something, um, <laughs> there's no, there's, there's less crap to freak. You can lose this little pin in here or something. This, some other shit. This thing is not. 
It's still really, really good, though. I don't know. A lot of people kind of ignore this weapon. And, well, let me, uh, I'm going to shut this off. We're going to, I'm going to take this down. We're going to put this slide on it. So remember, this was uh, freaking eight and three quarters inches. This was like maybe less than five. If you put an eight round magazine, maybe it's five inches this way. And I'll, I'll get a measurement on the thickness of this. It, it's a thin puppy, though, man. You know? It's thin. You know, as long as you can chop down the length in this thing, it's uh, quite concealable. And if you got eight in a freaking magazine and one in a chamber, hey, that's pretty damn good, man. And, you know, to me, well, I don't think you, I don't think I should tell you to do this, but I always hated these stupid things where you had to hold this in, because sometimes I didn't grab it right, and it was safe, so I got mine with a strap on it, and this is permanently held in, so I have to just pull, I pull the hammer back and shoot it, that's what I do it, like a revolver. Well, I was curious what it chopped it down to. It didn't chop it down. It does chop it down quite a bit. This was eight and three quarter inches total length. And this, so you got about seven and a quarter inches. So it chopped it down an inch and a half. Um, this is under five inches with a standard magazine, maybe five inches. But it's a skinny weapon, you know? It's pretty skinny. What the hell is this thing? <laughs> you know, it's, it's what the hell is that? It's fairly skinny. It's about, it's under an inch, I guess. Up on the top of the slide. And these grips are, you know, it's a little wider than an inch down here on the bottom, but it's not you know, you could probably put thinner grips on if you want. Yeah. It's not too bad. So it's like an inch, 1.3 inches with the standard stock cheapo grips. So, yeah, it's, it's it actually, this thing is actually quite concealable, <laughs> you know. Um, now, I know when I changed this slide, I put the shorter slide on, I was firing it. I had to mess around with some springs to get it working right. So I had these springs here. and But yeah, it works fine now. And the one I had, I was lucky. It was right out. I don't think all the Colts right out of the box or, you know, you might have to break them in. I don't mind. Seem to be perfect. So I always liked it. But this bad boy actually is pretty good um, because, you know, it's not something that you, I think 50 years from now, even if this thing's like this telling you right now, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's 1911 when it came out. It's old, right? But I don't know. It's, it reminds me of like a say what i don't know 57 chevy or something right whatever you know it's a classic man it's it's still going to work fine for what you need it for and uh you, like i said you can put the standard seven round magazines in it you put the eight you want this thing to stick way the hell out say for instance you had this as your concealed carry and you had eight plus one and you had this thing as an extra <laughs> you had 11 that's pretty good with a 45 you know so it's it's kind of cool because you can have like two weapons in one, and I don't really, you know, I I'm not, I'm a person I just keep it simple, stupid. I mean I don't really give a damn about, you know, buying. The, I'll tell you one thing: I've had no misfeeds with just using a plain lead ball ammo. Um, the stuff I reloaded, it's got plenty of power. It's a 45 caliber. Um. I mean, it's not even full metal jacket. If you wanted to, you can actually melt down your old lead from wheel weights. Um, I forgot what the hell the projectiles cost. But, you know, usually when you're reloading, the projectiles are the biggest part cost of the reloading. Not the powder and the primers, the projectiles. But not in the case when you just get plain lead. And um, my particular weapon, you know, the original one with this slide on it, it never jammed. The one thing I don't kind of like about these is, well, they're not really hard to take down. It depends on how practiced you are. I, was, I used to be really practiced at it. I wouldn't want to take that part this weapon in the dark. Like, maybe I used to be able to do that. Um, the Beretta, you know, it's like you got to press one button on the side. You flip this thing down, it's out, you know. Uh, this thing is like you got to play around with it a little bit. You got to move this over. You got to press this button in and then move this thing over. And then that loosens that up. And then when you line this up over here, you can pull this out 
and then when that pulls out the whole thing comes out because that pin lines up with this bad boy right here right there so then you put this in uh, like you got to kind of watch <laughs> you know if you're not if you're not you know if, I, like I don't know how you could do this at night you know if you're trying to put this together at night if it's like absolutely no light out I mean you really have to practice um, uh, like you'd have to um, you, you know I look for light and I look for where this hole is and then I push the pin in there and I say okay that's it you know I got it then after this is in I could press that spring down, push this down, and just slide this over this thing right here. This just slides over the cap, whatever the hell you call this damn thing. But yeah, that's one thing I don't like about it compared to a Beretta because it's not, it's definitely not as easy to take down. But it's a weapon that's been around so freaking long. And like I said, you can make, it's like two weapons in one. And it's, if you, re, if you reload and you just use playing lead ball, it's, it's, man, it's dirt cheap. It's cheaper to shoot than a 380. You know? It really is. I mean, what does it cost? A 380 ammo is actually more 9 mil. And actually, I, I could shoot this for less than 9 mil because the plain lead um, bullets, projectiles, you know, they call them bullets. Like, there's ammunition is like the loaded ammunition and bullets are projectiles. The plain lead bullets in a nine millimeter don't work out right because they deform too much due to the higher velocities or pressures or whatever the hell it is but they work fine in this I can use plain lead ball in this so they, I, they're cheap um, so it's actually cheaper to shoot than a nine mil or a 380 even definitely more than a, cheaper to shoot than a 380 if you reload and you know I don't know what are, what are a lot of weapons. You know, this is well, this is pretty big. <laughs> it's seven and a quarter. I guess some of them are like what five inches or something like that. But they're they're bulkier. They're they're thicker. This thing's a skinny little puppy, man. And um, you still got quite a bit of uh, freaking capacity, considering it's a forty-five. You can have eight plus one, no problem. It'll just stick out of here, maybe a quarter inch. The height is about the same. And um, I think the skinniness make weight makes up for the freaking length. <laughs> so um and it does seem to be very reliable now you could leave it you know locked and cocked you can see it like this and put it like that and have it like that and you're ready that's locked and cocked so in other words that's like your safety right you can't pull the trigger you're supposed to have this strap so you got to have your hand around it but i always have the strap strap I have it tightened down just pull it like that and go boom ah right which has already been safety checked 12 times already um so so let me put it to you this way, you know, um, or you can carry it like a Western shoot six shooter. You know, you can have it, you know, unlocked and cocked. You just pull it out and pull the hammer back and, and then it's single action from within on, right? Because the slide will be back ready for the next shot. Boom, 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 right? I mean, the slide will go back and it'll pull the hammer back for the next shot. It's, uh, I don't know, it's an ignored weapon. But, you know, I don't, the thing is, why don't people freaking buy, you know, spend a thousand dollars for these weapons? You know, they're all over the place. You can get one used, you can get an extra slide for it. Um, you know, if it needs, you know, usually if there's some kind of misfeed or something like that, maybe it's a spring action for springs. That's what I found out was a problem with this little thing here. It's got like an extractor on it. It's not a blowback operation, which I like that because say, for instance, you got a clear jam, you go, you can, you got an extractor, right? But it doesn't. It doesn't jam. It's very, very good. I don't know. It's ignored, man. <laughs> it's ignored because somebody goes, "It's old technology," you know. Well, you know what? Maybe I'd rather be driving a '55 Chevy. You know, maybe that's my, maybe that's why I think. So who the hell knows? Um, just want to put this out here because um, one of the main considerations is if you want to like do a real lot of shooting, and also you, like I said, you can reload these with plain lead ball ammunition. You're not going to have any problem with. You know, it, like in a nine mil, that seems that doesn't seem to work right. With a forty-five, the lower velocities, the two thirty grain lead ball works fine. Um, and to me, I mean, that could be fine for your carry ammunition. You know what I mean? It's a freaking forty-five, right? Two thirty grain. I mean, I think if a lead ball, uh, two thirty grain, is going to be far better than the best expanding three eighty. You know, maybe somebody could argue about that, but I think it's going to be better. Um, 
but the trigger on these things usually is pretty damn sweet and that's really why they seem to be very accurate it's a very nice trigger that's probably why I like it better than a Beretta a lot of times although I like the capacity I'll tell you the truth though overall I like the capacity of the Beretta better and I know there's a lot of fine weapons out there but this seems to be a weapon that was like the buzzword for eight million years and now everybody's ignoring it for some reason and I'm like it, it really isn't freaking uh, bad man it's not bad at all um I shouldn't even say it that way I should say it's actually great because it's got a lot of versatility it's cheap as shit to shoot the only thing cheaper to shoot than this is a 22 rimfire <laughs> I swear to God and um, it's powerful and you can you do have good capacity with an 8 plus 1 and uh, it is pretty well concealable with that compact I don't I think they call this the commander or something like that when you got the short they just like to call the pit bull with the auto ordinance it's called the commander with the colt or something like that and it's because it's thin it's thin and uh, it's quick you know a lot of people actually still can use this for competitive shooting all the time right so you know don't ignore this weapon <laughs> it's not bad just don't pay a lot of money for it because there's got to be a gazillion of them out there that are used that are good deals and uh, you know if you want to make it if you want to have two weapons in one just like this thing with two slides no problem it's easy to do